political panel. Joining me, Liberal MP Jason Valensky and Labor MP Patrick Gorman. Gentlemen, thanks both for your time this morning. Look, we better begin on Andrew Constance. He was in and then apparently he read a naughty word in a newspaper about him and he was out, Jason Valensky. Is that really a reason not to enter federal politics? Uh, look, Tom, I think I've uh, talked about uh, state ministers running for federal seats enough this week. Um, Pat can have my five minutes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think Pat wants all of your five minutes, and I'm not going to let you go yet, Patrick Gorman. What, what about that reason that he gave, that he read the front page in the newspaper and he thought, well, no, I'm not going in for any of this? Oh, Tom, look, it's, it's all... It's all... It's very mysterious and very difficult to understand. So you find it difficult to understand Andrew Constance pulling out 24 hours later and the reasons he gave, they didn't stack up to you? Uh, look, I... No, they didn't, to be honest. They didn't. But, look, we have a one-in-100-year opportunity to win a seat from the opposition. It hasn't happened since the late 1920s. We have some very strong local candidates. We're pretty excited that uh, they'll make a real difference if they get a chance to represent their community in Canberra. That's what we're focused on. And, um, you know, the Prime Minister's standing in the community at the moment. It's never been higher. So... Um, we're, we're, pretty, we're, we're pretty hopeful about running a, a successful campaign, but we're not um, unawares of the very that it's a very difficult task for a government to win a seat off an opposition in a by-election, and it hasn't happened in 100 years. So we understand the challenge in front of us, and that's what we're focused on. So is Andrew Constance, amidst all of that and that hope you have there, has he let the party down? Um, look, it wasn't ideal what he did, no. But then having said that, I think we'll probably end up with... Um, there are a couple of people who are standing for pre-selection at the moment whose local uh, attributes are really good and I think they're something that we can actually put a campaign around. So, you know, the task is a very difficult one. Labor's starting a long way ahead, um, but hopefully with the standing of the Prime Minister and the quality of the candidates we can come up with, um, we, can, uh, we can get there. But, look... You know, it's it's very tough to win a seat off an opposition at a by-election, and it hasn't happened in 100 years. Well, we can disperse with the expectation management, surely, for Labor now, Patrick Gorman, given what's happened on the other side. Uh, you've got to win this seat now, don't you? Well, I think step one, Jason said he thinks it's got to be a good campaign for the Liberal Party and because of the Prime Minister's standing. Well, step one is to actually have a candidate... My experience uh, with the Liberal Party in by-elections was uh, I came in at a by-election here in Perth. The Liberal Party didn't even field a candidate after weeks of should we, shouldn't we, umming, ahhing. Uh, I don't even know if the Liberal Party's going to stand a candidate at this time, but I think Anthony Albanese has made it very clear we don't take this for granted. This community has been through an incredibly tough time uh, throughout the course of 2020. I would like to see the Liberal Party at least put forward a candidate and... Uh, allow the people of Eden Monero to decide what they think is in their best interests. Was that just a humble bat brag, Patrick Gorman, that they wouldn't dare run a candidate against you? Um, Tom, can I, can I just intercede at this point and say, if the Labor Party doesn't want to run a candidate against me at the next election, I won't complain. That would be OK with me. Oh. I'm sorry Patrick's disappointed we didn't run a candidate against him at the by-election. We That's won't bizarre, make that Jason. mistake again. <laughs> Um, but, look, it is what's happening on the Liberal Party side and in the National Party, it does seem particularly horrible. You've got leaked text messages, you've got uh, a, a, what sound like abusive phone calls. Um, Jason's in the New South Wales Liberal Party. I just hope they're being nice to Jason because he's a good guy and I hope no-one's giving him horrible phone calls that would discourage him from contesting the next election. Patrick, people could always be like nicer the kiss of to death. me, frankly. <laughs> Patrick Gorman endorsing Jason Felinski sounds like the kiss of death to me. So uh, we'll see what that means for the good burgers of McKellar next time around. You were spent. You were mentioning leaks. I'll put though, it on there, a billboard. Patrick Gorman. What about the leak? <laughs> what about the leak out of shadow cabinet suggesting Anthony Albanese will ditch big spending increases, promises on health and education because of coronavirus and realities of the budget? Would you agree with that approach? Well, what we've said for a num well for almost a year now is, of course, we're going to have a comprehensive review of our policies. Remember that we are, the coalition still has to deliver two more budgets before we get to the next federal election. 
it's entirely reasonable that Labor would review its policies uh, and that we would mm. look uh, at where spending is most needed in the new economic and health realities and national security realities we find ourselves in uh, following this coronavirus pandemic. It's, uh, it's a statement of pure so, logic. So would that new reality, new though, dictate policy. what we're hearing out of this, out of this leak and, and uh, a new, I suppose, this is not a formal policy position just yet, but saying, look, those past promises, particularly after COVID-19, just won't make any sense? We've been really clear that we would announce our policies far closer to the election. In the context of the coronavirus pandemic, that is, of course, what we should be doing because, as I said, the government has to deliver two more budgets before we even get to the point of having another federal election. So uh, you're not going to see any rush on the Labor side for policies into the future until we know what the government is planning to do in the budget in October and the subsequent bu budget currently due in May 2021. But, of course... I acknowledge that the government may choose to reallocate the timeline for that budget as well. All right. I was hoping for a bit more out of you there, but I tried. Jason Valinsky, are you uh, cheering on from the sidelines? It'll be uh, perhaps... Tom, um, Tom, a, a can I tell you, you missed the big on, story. Spending no, no, you missed the big story out of Shadow Cabinet, which was everyone having a fight with Christina Keneally over immigration policy. Um, health, health and... Uh, Health and schools were not the big issue at, um, at Shadow Cabinet. It was Christina versus the rest. I mean, I understand that Penny Wong actually threw a jug of water at Christina. Is this true, Pat? Well, uh, Jason, I think that's a really uh, colourful way of reminding people I'm not in Shadow Cabinet, so they've got nothing to do <laughs> on that. But uh, it, does, it does seem like you've been reading a little bit too much fiction, so I know what... Uh, yeah, I know what's you on your Twitter? book file this week. <laughs> Mm. Well, can, can I say I'm going to return the compliment tonight. and endorse you for Shadow Cabinet? <laughs> All right, well... Uh, I like the way that this... That, I like the way you two uh, think you can just um, boost each think, other all the way. There'll be two Prime Ministers Tom, by the end of the show at this stage. <laughs> Tom, I think, I think this is what they call mutually assured destruction. <laughs> yes, I think that's more accurate. I want to ask you something just finally, Patrick Gorman, get your views on this. WA is taking a very hard-line stance on borders. It looks like it won't let... For example, AFL clubs fly in, fly out. Now, other states seem to be letting the AFL do that. Do you agree with the, the McGowan stance on this? What I have heard loud and clear from my community in Perth is that people think Mark McGowan is doing a fabulous job. I completely agree with that. And that means taking a hard line on protecting the health of Western Australians. The hard border closure has been successful. Uh, they, there are clear exemptions for people who do need to travel, but... When it comes to AFL teams, I noticed that the AFL has said that the female Dockers, of which I have been a member for 25, 26 years, uh, will have the choice of where they locate in that sort of East Coast-based competition for the rest of 2020. Uh, it seems like people are taking this in a quite a mature fashion. Uh, I'd love to see the AFL get up and running again, but in terms of having teams fly back and forward, uh, who knows, it might actually be a good thing for... Uh, the Dockers and the Eagles to not be doing those long flights every couple of weeks. Uh, you might say that it uh, turn, uh, changes the competition and does very well for my beloved Fremantle Dockers. All right, well, there you go. You've heard it first. If they don't start the season with a few wins, uh, Patrick Gorman will take responsibility. Patrick Gorman, Jason Valinsky, always good to talk. Thank